Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer and motor grommet. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new motor grommet. The motor grommet is mounted in between the motor and the motor mounting plate. The manager should be changing it out so if it's lost or damaged and it's causing vibrations. In order to change the part, we have to go around to the back of the washer. Now that we're on back, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the console down. You don't have to take them out all the way. You just have to loosen them up enough so that they come out of the cabinet. Once you have the screws loose, you can push the console forward a little bit to unlock it and then rotate it back up and out of the way. Then we can come around front and we have to take out these two gold locking tabs that hold the cabinet to the back wall. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver and just push down on it. Then you can flex forward so the clip comes out of the cabinet. Then you can unhook it from the back wall and pull it off the machine. Once you have the locking clips off, we can take the lid switch wiring harness off. There's a little locking tab that you can lift up on. You can use a flathead screwdriver if it's tight. You can pull the wiring harness out and set it aside. To get the cabinet off, we're going to lift up the lid and grab the lip of the opening right here. And then put our foot down at the bottom of the machine and tilt the cabinet towards you until it's about a 45 degree angle or so. Then you can slide it back and off the frame. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cabinet off, we can take the water pump off. It's just held in by these two clips. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver to help lift them off. Once you have it released from the pump, we're going to turn it 90 degrees so we can pull it out of the motor. The bottom one comes out the same way. Now we can take off the pump. If when you're pulling on it, it doesn't come off, it may be leaking and the shaft is rusted to the pump. So you may have to get behind it with a flathead screwdriver to get it off. Once you get it off, you want to look at the back. And if you see any evidence of it leaking, you want to change the pump too. Once you have it off, you can swing it out of the way so we can take the motor off. Now we can take off the wiring harness to the motor. It's got a locking tab on it. Just going to get behind with a flathead screwdriver. Once you have it released, you can pull the wire harness off. Now we can take the motor off. Just like the pump, there's a couple clips we have to release. They have some retaining screws in there. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take the screws out first. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to use our flathead screwdriver to help pop the clips off. We're going to take the lower one off first. Now we can take out the upper motor clip. You want to make sure you support the motor so it doesn't fall as you're taking this out. And we're going to use our flathead screwdriver to pop it free. Once you have it free, we're going to drop the motor down a little bit and turn the clip 90 degrees so we can pull it out of the motor mounting plate. Once you have it off, you can set it aside we can grab the motor with both hands and lift it out. Now that we can see the mounting plate, you can see the four spots where the grommets mount. Yours may have stuck to the motor plate or they may have come out on the motor. All you have to do is pull out your bad grommet. Once you have the motor grommet out, you can pull it off the washer. Here's the old motor grommet next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you put the motor grommet on, you want to put it onto the motor mounting post and make sure that the narrow part is up. All you have to do is push it on. And also you want to grab any motor grommets that stuck onto the motor mounting plate and move them over to the motor. Before we put the motor back in, you want to look at the coupler. The rubber part gets old and worn out, like this one where the holes start to elongate, and you know this is going to fail pretty soon. So you might as well change it while you have the motor out. Also, you want to 
line up this hole at the 12 o'clock position because we're going to put the other side of the coupler with the pin at 12 o'clock. So when we slide the motor in, it goes in nice and easy. Now we're going to turn the motor around and lift it up so we can put it into place. Once you have it slid all the way in, we're going to hold it for a second while we grab the upper mounting clip. We're going to drop the motor down a little bit just like when we took it out. And we're going to put the upper clip into the motor mounting plate and turn it 90 degrees and then lift the motor up and snap it into place. Once you have the upper one in, the motor will be supported so we can reach down and put the lower one in. To put the lower one on, all you have to do is lift it up and snap it into place. Once you have them both on, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws back in. Once you have the screws back in, we can reach around and grab the wire harness and reconnect it to the motor. All you have to do is line it up so it locks into place and you get a good connection. To put the pump on, we're going to lift it out and you're going to have to turn it over and make sure that the flats on the water pump line up with the flats on the motor shaft. If not, you may have to rotate it a little bit so that when you turn the pump over, they line up and you can push it all the way on. Once you have it all the way on, we can secure it with the mounting clips. To put the clips back on, we're going to push them into the motor and turn them 90 degrees so they lock in. Once you have it locked in, we can lift it up so it locks the pump to the motor. The upper one goes on the same way. Now that we have the clips on, we can put the cabinet back on the washer. In order to put the cabinet back on, we're going to line it up at the same angle we took it off. And we're going to hook the lip underneath the front. And we're going to set the cabinet down so that the tabs come through the holes in the cabinet. Once you have the cabinet set down, you can pull on the back panel to make sure that the plastic piece goes into the cabinet. Once you have both sides in, we can put the retaining clips on. To put the clip on, we're going to hook it onto the back panel and clip it onto the cabinet. Once you have this side on, we can do the other side. Once you have both clips in, we can grab the lid switch wiring harness and plug it back in. It can only go on one way. Just make sure it goes on all the way and locks in. Once you have the wire harness attached, we can close the console. Slowly let the console down and get behind it so we can line up the locking tabs. And Once you have them in on each side, you can pull back a little bit to lock them into place. And then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to tighten down the screws. Now that we have the washer put back together, you can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.